Why do I have to call myself something I have no connection to? See, if the slave owners could hear what Trick Daddy said right now, they'd be like, yes, yes, this is what we wanted. And this, this is my dream. It's kind of my dream. My dream is every black America goes to Africa. Just, just go there, just for one week. He's right. To an extent, Trick Daddy is right. Let me start there. Oh, wait, wait, what? No, he's right. Because you have to look at perspective. So on the face of it, you say, obviously you are African-American. Obviously you've got African ancestry. Obviously you're connected to Africa because your ancestors um, were taken from their home in Africa, brought on to America, and then were then put in as slaves. So your history doesn't start with slavery. Your history starts perhaps hundreds, hundreds of years ago from which whatever African country you're from, if you do your DNA test. But you have to look at the perspective. From Trick Daddy's perspective, I've never been to Africa. I don't know any African people. I am disconnected from the content or the culture. So why should I go ahead and call myself African American? I believe he's based in Miami. And I'm I'm all I'm based in, in America, Florida, wherever it is, and I've always been here. I've been here most of my life. I have never set foot in Africa, so why do I have to keep calling myself African American? And oh, I'm African, I'm African, African. When no, I'm Black American, or rather, I'm America. That is my culture. That is what I'm connected to because I'm not connected to Africa. So from his perspective, of course, he's right. Because if you live through his experience. Why are you connected with, why do I have to call myself something I have no connection to? Even more so with how Africa is presented, African booty scratcher, these guys are messed up, they are backward. Why do I want to be connected with that? Specifically with how media has put, portrayed it. So from Trick Daddy's point of view, it makes sense. It's called myself Black America. But let's just go through this right now. So I want to play... I want to show you another image. So I'm going to ask you this question. He, this is a really famous producer in the South. He broke a lot of acts, and he produced a lot of acts. He's not people don't have not really know of his face. He's behind the scenes, but if you're a real hip hop aficionado, you should know who who this is. He's huge in the South. I'll give you a few minutes. Think of him. He's a massive, massive record pro producer in the South, and broke a lot of people in the South. I mean, a lot of I mean, Southern saw the acts. The thing about it, if if you know who it is, you, know, you have to really be a deep hip hop aficionado to know who this is. You know. Now, people who know this is will be like, huh? The guy you're looking at ain't America. <laughs> I'm not. Sure. He may have been to America, but he ain't American. He's one hundred percent Nigerian. And he is called Mr. Ibu, and he's a very famous Nollywood actor. So obviously, you know um, Aki and Popo, the really famous shots actors that you always see go viral. He was in a lot of the other films. Obviously, sadly, he died. Rest in peace. If you just put on this image and he didn't know this was Mr. Ibu, he could very easily be American. If you just put up this image, this guy could be from. Congo. <laughs> this guy could be from Senegal. He could be from Nigeria. Because is there that much difference between this image and this image? This guy, you if I just put on this image, you could very much easily think that this guy is, is from the South um, of uh, America. Um, because the thing here, what's trick that he needs to understand is this is what they wanted. This is what they always wanted. I said, what do you mean, mean, mean by, by that there? You see, if by saying that your history starts with slavery, you're doomed. You're, you're doomed. So, because then you will always run into a problem 
and you will always be living within a psychology of conflict. If you say, no, anything before slavery did not exist, my history started at slavery. If you say your history started at slavery, which it didn't, but if you say it did, you'll be always living in conflict. And the key of what you have to understand is, is what the slave owners wanted. You see, if the slave owners could hear what Trick Daddy said right now, they'd be like, yes, yes, this is what we wanted. What Slavery just wasn't about the, the, the physical. No, it was about this. This was the most important thing. It was, the physical was there, yes. Get, let these guys to work for, for free. But the, what they wanted was divorce them from their culture, divorce them from their ancestry, connect them to this new world, this new America that we control, and make them hate their ancestry. Make them hate the culture that they are from, completely divorce them from that culture completely. So it's a systematic, psychological warfare on them. So you get to the point where in 2024, they're like, I don't want to be connected to Africa. This, these slave owners will be like, oh my gosh, we won. That's what we wanted. What we wanted was... They don't want anything to do with Africa. They are completely connected to um, America. They want to be fully American, and they don't want to anything to do with their African culture and their ancestry. Because once you have that, we have them. We have them under control. This was their this was their dream. So, if the slave owners could hear Trick Daddy now, they'd be like, "Thank the Lord." I don't know what Lord that is, but thank goodness, <laughs> or rather, or rather, thank evilness. Yes, we won. Because, again, I get it. I 100% understand and get strict at this point of view because for many African Americans who say we are American descendants of, of slaves, we are foundational black Americans, I get it. But this is about identity and culture, and identity and culture is vital. It's vital. And if you focus on we are American descendants of the slaves, we are foundational black Americans, you, that's, you, that's not real culture. Or if it is, that culture is problematic because that culture, it will forever be tied to, to this. And if you're forever tied to this, you will always be in a state of conflict. And I repeat myself, it's what they wanted. Those slave owners, they wanted Stuff like ADOS, American Descendants of Slaves. What they wanted was, no, let them have slavery be the beginning of their culture. Because if they have that, we will always be able to step on them. Because I'm like, how? So you want me to respect someone who is a descendant of slaves, guys that we were on? <laughs> so as a, as a white man, I'm like, bro, you're descendants of slaves. My forefathers used to own you. My forefathers treated you like property. So as a white guy... How, why the hell should I re have any respect for you when my forefathers used to own you <laughs> and taught you and treated you like trash? So if you have that as your genesis, it will always be problematic and you can never really psychologically move forward. So give you an example. The history of Nigeria can be traced back to at least 13,000 BC. Not 1700s, 13,000 BC, when the first inhabitants of the region left behind their remains. The region has been home to many ancient civilizations, including the Nord culture, the Kingdom of Nri, the Benin Kingdom, and the Oyo Empire. So speaking of Benin, because that is the region that my father's from, like Edo, say Edo State, Benin. Culture. Now, England, could you please give back these, these bronze things? Because for some reason, they stole these bronze statues from the Benin Kingdom and now keep them in the museum and they don't want to give them back. Well, culture. These, this is what the Benin Kingdom is known for. Um, these absolutely amazing um, bronze carvings. These date back hundreds upon hundreds of years. And as you can see, 13,000 BC. History is culture. That's real culture. Traditions that can be dated hundreds upon hundreds and hundreds of years. This isn't connected to slavery. It isn't connected to being part of someone's property. This is agency. 
This is freedom of thought, individuality. And I don't want to just add something in here because Africans, don't you dare demean or insult African or black, black Americans. Don't you dare to do that, don't. Because what I don't, what I hate is, uh, look at these dumb Americans. These guys are stupid. You know, we have a history. These guys have no history. These guys are just stupid people. That's very disingenuous and that's very rude because you have to be cognizant and aware of what black Americans had to go through and the psychological mental warfare that they're having to fight that Africans don't have to fight. So Africans trying to demean or insult them, you're being stupid, you're being foolish, and that's just being dumb because you have to be aware of the particular history, difficult history that they had to go through that's Africans who went stick ticket from the homes had to go through. So that's very aware. But again, culture. Because this year isn't tied to slavery. It isn't tied to hardship. This is genuine culture from a group of people that dates back 13,000 BC. <laughs> hundreds upon hundreds of, of, of years. And you look at this clothing. This is culture. This is tradition that dates back hundreds upon hundreds of years. See, it's like a human thing. Let me just use an example. So let's say there's this and that. So there's, oh, how long does it date for? Oh, this goes back 100 years. Woo, 100 years, pretty good. What's this? No, no, no. So, or rather, I'll just say, um, so this dates back 100 years. Oh, wow, this is amazing. What's, what's about this? Oh, this dates back 1,000 years. What will you have more reverence for? I mean, this is cool. But this dates back a thousand. Just as a human being, you will f you will have more reverence for this because it's older. Something that's a hundred years, cool. But something that's a thousand years, wow. So, when you are connected to a tradition that dates back thousands upon thousands of years, that is way older than America. Then you're like, oh, okay, because. What you have to realize is America is a, is a very young country. It's a very, very young country. So yes, it's, the, it has its tra traditions, it has its histories, but America isn't even close to the kind of history that let's say England has, France has, Germany has, or the Benin King Kingdom, or Abyssinia, <laughs> you know, where these guys are far older and a culture that is far older it's deeper. I'm not saying it's not that it's better. There is more reverence to something that, that's historical. I'll give you an example. You, you're, you're, you're in a room and there's a 30 year old person, a 50 year old person, and an 80 year old person. Who would you go through to for life advice and to get wisdom? The 30 year old, the 50 year old, or the 80 year old? The 80-year-old, he's lived 80 years. So he has experienced more and seen more than the 30-year-old and the 50-year-old. So you will have more reverence and you'd want to learn more from the 80-year-old who has seen more in his life. Experience is experience. A 30-year-old cannot have the experience of an 80-year-old. A 50-year-old cannot have the experience of an 80-year-old. Wisdom is very key. And what I always say is, this is why for trick, trick data, you have to go to Africa. And he says, because when you go there and you experience it, you're like, Jesus, there's, there are actually a lot of similarities. You see, that's why I understand his point of view, because if you never went, his view makes, makes sense. I've never been to Africa. I have no connection to Africa or, or Africans. All I see from Africa is what the American white media shows me. So why the hell do I have to call myself African-American? It makes sense if you haven't gone. But I always say that the most important thing in life, being informed. Be informed, information is very key. Um, I'll, give, I'll give you a good example here. So people will say, oh no, rap bastards, oh, that's, that is America, this is a black American culture. And black Americans, we invented the concept of battling and rap battle. This is full American American. So I'll give you an example. I'll give you an, an, an example here. Um, if you, um, 
hold on, yeah, yeah, let me bring this in. So let me bring this in. So if you, so what, when I was, I was, I was growing up, so six, seven, we had no MTV, didn't really know what's happening in America. All we had was Nigerian television. So we used to do a thing in school where we, we called it yapping contest, where we do yap people. And yap just means to insult people. So two people would be facing each other lie like that. There'd be a whole crowd. One guy would insult, insult, insult. Another guy would insult, insult, insult. And whoever just had the, the best insults, I, whoever the crowd would react to, um, the guy who got the biggest reaction based on how well he would yab the other guy would, would, would win. Very similar to rap battles. So this whole thing of rap battling originated in Africa. When you were brought over to American slavery, it happened. Not to, to the refined way that rap was, but it happened. 100% it would have happened where we'd be gathered around and we'd do what we're doing back in our home. And it just evolved into what we now see in rap battling. So this isn't unique to all America. This dates back because this is science. This is just humanity. Your culture is your culture. And you carry your culture on all the way through. Things an Englishman does today, he was doing hundreds of years ago. Things a Frenchman does today, he was doing hundreds and thousands of years ago. Things a Spaniard does today, the way a Spaniard acts, he was doing that hundreds, hundreds upon hundreds of years ago. Now, there may be a bit of a refinement because it's a different world and culture, but there's certain innate things in an Englishman, a Frenchman, a German, a Spanish, a Nigerian, a Japanese, a South Korean, an Iranian, a Moroccan that haven't changed. Because that culture of what is within you, innate to you will always be within you. There will be refinements as years goes on, but there are certain intrinsic things of your culture that will last for thousands of thousands of, upon years. You don't, you don't lose those intrinsic things. So I want to give another example. So, so for I think was it a year? so I think it was for a year. I used to work for a kilt comp company where we sold we sold kilts. So it was like an Amazon company where we'd be sold kilts. And like I was like the salesperson. So, so and we so we sold on Amazon and eBay. Our biggest customer were Americans. But, so, you know, but, but they're American, no no. So these were Americans who did like their DNA test or, or whatsoever know that of their Scottish history and are like, oh I want to be embedded in my Scottish history. And they would buy kilts to embrace their heritage and history. And I would speak to the customers, email them, and they'll just talk to me about the excitement of learning about their Scottish history and wanting to get specific kilts to um, embody their history. So, as I said again, America is a young country. Yes, there's history and it's a culture, but it's young. So, I think Scotland is so, yeah, I think Scotland is older than England. Scotland goes way freaking back. So this kilt and the reason of the kilt goes way back. So wearing that kilt, you're wearing history that far outdates America. So for those Americans, yes, a part of them is American, a part of them has American culture, but they know the real deep intrinsic culture is Scottish, which goes back way further than um, America. And that is why knowing your ancestry is very key because that sense of identity is, is very key. Look at the Irish Americans, the um, Italian um, Americans. Yeah, Italian Americans, yeah, we love America, but look at how much they embrace their Italian culture, how important their Italian culture is because they know that that history is far deeper and far embodies their intrinsic identity far more than America. So I'm gonna give you another thing as well. So, and, and this is why I just say like, for black Americans, you have to be very, you have to be very aware of the bigger picture here. So America, America, one for America, uh, screw Africa, screw Africa, blah, blah. Africa, British, Africa is trash, America, ooh, USA. So you're American. How come there's never been a black American president? Huh? I'll say it again. So you're fighting for a country who even have not been able to give one of your own 
the highest position in the country. But say, half of what are you talking about? Yeah, Obama was president, eight years. Kamala Harris was a vice president. Mm -mm -mm. As the ADOS say, or FBA say, Obama's mother was white from Oklahoma. Obama's father is Kenyan. Not black American, not a descendant of slaves. Kenyan, African. Kamala Harris's mother is Indian. Her father is Jamaican. So not a descendant of slaves, not an ADOS, not a black American. So neither Barack Obama's father nor Kamala Harris's father are black Americans. So you've never had a black American hold the highest position in office. The closest it's been, Jesse Jackson and Shelley Chisholm. Really, and Shelley Chisholm, super historic, first African-American woman to actually try to run for presidential office. And I think she was the first sort of member in Congress. And Jesse Jackson also in the 70s ran for presidency as well. But that's the closest of people who you would say are ADOS and um, FBA. So I say to say this is that, and this, this is my dream. It's kind of my dream. My dream is every black America goes to Africa. Just, just go there, just for one week and experience it. Experience isn't watching videos, watching YouTube videos, being told about it, looking at pictures. Go there, go onto the soil, breathe the air, look at the people, look at how people act, look at how people operate. Because as somebody who lived in Nigeria, grew up in Nigeria, went to nursery school and primary school in Nigeria, I see a lot of things that black Americans do. I'm like, oh yeah, that's like my uncle. Oh, that's like my auntie. Or like, that's like the guy down the street. Just the mannerisms, the way that they talk, yeah. Why is there such a huge reverence of elders in, let's say, in the black com com community? That's not uniquely black American. Like, and that's something that I experienced. I remember when I first came to England, I was like, you can disrespect your elder? <laughs> because the white English people had completely disrespect for their elders. Like, wait, that's shocking. And a big thing in Nigerian culture, African culture, is you respect your elder. Because the elder is a very important figure in the community. Same thing for black Americans. So that's not uniquely black American. That is what you took from your ancestry that dates back to freaking BC. <laughs> not slavery, BC. Way before America was even a freaking concept. So again, that's why my dream is if everybody could have, and again, it's hard, but that's my, my hope and my dream is that every black American goes to Africa for a week. And 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 end with this is that, so oh, but Richard Pryor. So Richard Pryor, before he used to be, say, N -word, bro, N -word, blah, 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 explosives. And he was doing a show where he said that he went to Africa for the, for the first time. And when he went there, it was a life-changing experience. As was, he was like, bro, I, I can't start using the N word now. <laughs> so a word that they used to insult us, and now using it against other people. Oh no, but we now have claimed ownership. Do Latinos use slurs amongst themselves? Do Asians use slurs amongst them, themselves? Do any other minority group use slurs upon them, them themselves? No, it's a slur. It is used as an insult. You can't now reshape it as a term of an endearment. That makes no sense. And we should probably realize that once now went to Africa, it's like, oh, no, no, no. I've, it's, it's what, and that is why I say that for so many people, Black Americans going to Africa, it would be it would be a life changing experience just to experience it and realize that oh, everyone's black. The poor guy is black. The rich guy is black. The president is black. The police are black. The people in charge are black. The shop guy is black. The lawyer is as black. The guy giving me a loan is black. Everyone is black. It changes your concept. So.